Hi, welcome to Astrology for GAN Traders. My name is Olga Morales. Now, for this month's presentation or short video, I'm going to be looking at harmonic stock analysis. So, a lot of people sort of get a little bit confused when I start talking about harmonic. So, I'm just going to simply clarify some points so that you get a feel for what I mean. And any time we talk about harmonics, it's basically dividing a circle by number and you get a proportion and that becomes a harmonic. So let me explain, we shall move it along. And what I want to do is I'm going to explain this by using first trade charts and we're going to be looking at predominantly the fourth and eighth harmonic. So when we look at first trade charts, we want to know the day a stock is listed on the a stock exchange, wherever you are. And basically that is what we would term as like a natal chart when someone is born. This is the same thing as for uh, energy for that day they are listed because there's a lot of emotion behind this. And so it's like a moment in time that we then refer back to. As Gan said, if you know the beginning, you'll know the end because we need a starting point with anything because it's got a vibration. So if you look at Google, you can see that the ascendant, this is a, the sign rising when it listed as Libra and you can see that the moon was just rising at that time but also on the MC which is the midheaven we can see that Venus was uh, conjunct the MC so when we start sort of stock analysis we should really just start with some um, mainly the ascendant, the midheaven the sun and the moon. Those four things will often give you enough information to start off with. As you can see, if we have to consider each one of these positions, you've got a lot of information. So when you start, just st stick with the basics. It's the same as when you do someone's personal chart. You want to know their personality. You just stick with those four po personal points and it gives you a lot of information about the person. So let's go to the next slide. What I'm able to do, now this is because I have this software called Timing Solution. I highly recommend it if you want to do a thorough analysis of anything you're studying. It saves you a lot of time and it's uh, amazing what you can get with that. What I've done here is I generated a chart for the fourth harmonic of the sun for Google. Okay, So what I've done is I've asked it to look it up. Basically it's replicating because I'm a cosmobiologist, it's replicating my 90 degree dial. So the fourth harmonic means when we divide a 360 by 4, it's actually 90 degrees. I'll explain a little bit more as I continue. But as you can see, it divides it up to basically 90 degrees along the bottom here. And the first 30 degrees is a cardinal section. The second 30 is fixed. And the third, third is mutable. Okay? So this is telling us that when the sun moves through these different um, points in the zodiac that it has quite significant differences. And you can see this very sharp sort of decline into late fixed, okay? And if we really look at it, the actual degrees of this point of the green section here is actually 26 fixed. And this is how I do my analysis. I want to know, okay, why? Why is there this point that's very... Uh, I call these hot spots. When they're red like this, it means there's a lot of synchronicity between the cycles. I want to know what's happening in 26 fix. There must be something in the natal chart. So that's when I go back to the natal chart. If you look at Google, what I've done now is put it on the 90 degree dial. Okay. The advantage of using a 90 degree dial is that you visually see the hard aspects between the planets immediately. So when you see these points cluster together, they have to be at a hard aspect, either either square or opposite. Okay, anything across the dial has to be semi-square or sesquic quadrant, which is 45 or 135. Now you can see why GAN analysis using the dial is so important because there were there are aspects that GAN was using and calculations he was using for his solar count. So. What I want to highlight is that, remember, if we go back to this, we can see that this point here, late fixed, is an important part of the annual cycle for Google. If we have a look, 
the actual natal sun is at 26 Leo which is a fixed sign so you can see where that late fixed comes into it but what you don't see if you don't know about the dial across the dial Venus comes into the equation as well because it's on the other side it's about 45 degrees apart or 130 well it has to be 45 so have a look here I've got a little table here that actually explains what that means if you anything across when we're looking across the dial you can see how the 26 of a fixed sign these are all the fixed signs is related to 11 of the cardinal signs which is this first 30 degrees so that axis is very important for Google okay natally so let's have a look at something that's been happening and then what you can do is this is a graphic ephemeris, 45 degree um, graphic ephemeris generated by Solifier. If you uh, don't have any software and you want to do some sort of trading, uh, astro trading, you're going to need some software. So these are the ones I use. Okay. Now what we can do with this, a 45 degree ephemeris is basically plotting the natal positions, which are the horizontal lines and then the transiting planets are the moving lines okay so we want to know when um, these transiting planets are going to going to trigger a natal position for that in this point can you see how this is the natal moon okay so the natal moon is there and I want to know what's happening with the outer planets and you know when they contact I remember because it's 45 degree ephemeris it's going to tell us all hard aspects and the hard aspects is what really cause things to happen, not the soft aspects, okay? So there we can see that, remember in 2012, there was the first um, square between Pluto and Uranus, and it was right on the natal moon, okay? So let's have a look at what happened. This is what it looks like. On the 24th of June, the low, you can see that because they were square, um, Pluto Uranus is square but right at 8 degrees it was right on the natal moon okay and also it came to some pretty significant midpoints in the natal chart so that you know I was already alerted to that just by looking any any company or any person with anything at the moment in these cardinal positions is going to feel the effects of what's happening with these two planets um, over even this year and, and the year after so they have to, you have to consider this, okay? So have a look at when, when transiting Uranus Pluto hit the natal moon, that was the low, okay? Now, continue this because we can just graph this and we know when these um, triggers are going to happen again. We can see that Pluto again then went to the natal MC and AC send at midpoint because they come to that midpoint there. So they, remember I said these are what I would term as personal points they're very specific for that company or if it's a natal if it's a person it's very significant for that person and you can see that that two times is these sort of moves we had here so very significant changes in the trend of the stock also a solar eclipse that happened um, on the 13th of November 2012 was if you look across the dial here close enough to have affected triggered the natal moon and also Pluto was at, across the dial at the same time so that was already telling me at the time that that was going to be an important time for Google and you can see that that was again another low okay so uh, the most recent low we ha we've had is what was the 9th of October 2013 and look what, what was there, Mars was there, came exactly to conjunct the natal sun uh, but at the same time these two are still in that zone creating across the dial a lot of I would call clustering for the stock but, but Mars always brings in some fire and uh, it was interesting that, that after that happened the stock actually after a few days just broke out there must have been some good news in there and it's been going up ever since so um, it's amazing how these natal positions actually do give you a lot of information now if we're thinking ahead we know there's going to be some um, 
in April this year, uh, around the 23rd, there's going to be an important cluster around 13 degrees of Cancer, which is in the cardinal area, so that's going to give us a lot of information that we should be watching for a lot of things. So I'll let you delve into that a little bit more. But what I can um, suggest, if you want to know more about the uh, dial and the 45 degrees, you can see my article and handouts from my UAC lecture on my website. Um, there's the link there. And also, the software uses Timing Solution, if you go under Links, and also Solar Fire. Um, so you need, you know, you need, if you want to go into it thoroughly and you want to analyse things, um, I, can't, I can't do it with that um, software, it just saves time. So I will often get asked about what I'm using. Well, that's what I'm using, and I highly recommend both. So anyway, go to my articles. You can see the handouts for the UAC lecture, and you'll have a little table understanding what the 90 degree and the 45 degree spread looks like. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight of how you can analyse stocks harmonically. And also just a reminder that my forthcoming Gantt Astro Trading Workshop on the 22nd and 23rd of March in Melbourne is coming up and we get into a lot of amazing detailed GAN analysis and I hope to see you there. Thank you.